In this app, we're going to load two different kinds of JSON into our project, one to store astronaut data and one to store mission data. Making these two load without causing too much code duplication and keeping our code easy to maintain takes some thinking. So we'll tackle it step by step. First things first, I'd like to drag in the files for this project. You can get them from GitHub in the project eight files directory, particularly grab astronauts.json and missions.json and drag them into your Xcode project navigator below content view like this. Make sure the box copy items if needed is checked, then press finish and they'll be added. While you're here, I'd like to open up your asset catalog and then drag in all the pictures from inside the images directory. All these ones here, just drag all those into your asset catalog like that. Uh, now, all those pictures are of uh, astronauts. So we have uh, here's Buzz Aldrin, for example, at various sizes, plus uh, mission badges and so forth across the various Apollo programs. Uh, and these are all created by NASA. And so under the US code, they are public domain. We can use them however we need to. Now, uh, I'd like to look inside the astronauts.json file just to see the kind of data we have to work with here. You'll see it's a, a bunch of data about our astronauts. So here's uh, Virgil Grissom, uh, Edward White, and so forth, uh, a whole bunch of them. And there is an identifier inside here. So Grissom has the ID Grissom, the name, Virgil I, Gus Grissom, and description text here. Uh, just information about each astronaut effectively. This is copied from Wikipedia. And so if you intend to use this in real shipping programs, you must credit Wikipedia under the CC by share alike license. Uh, it's required. So if you intend to use this in real apps, please credit Wikipedia. Okay, that's our astronaut data. It's a dictionary of, with keys of the astronaut's ID and then inside it, an ID, name, and description. We're gonna start off by converting that JSON into a Swift struct. So I'll press Command N in Xcode and choose Swift file, and name this thing astronaut.json, uh, dot, dot Swift, sorry, astronaut.swift, then press Create. Inside here we'll say a struct called astronaut, which is codable and identifiable has an ID string, a name string, and a description string. Now I've made this thing conform to codable, which means we can make instances of this thing pretty much straight from JSON. But I've also made it identifiable, so we can use arrays and dictionaries of astronauts inside SwiftUI in dynamic loops like for each and similar. This ID field in our JSON will work perfectly for that. Next, we want to convert all the data in astronauts.json here into a dictionary of astronaut instances we can work with, which means we've got to use that bundle class to find the location of astronauts.json inside our finished installed app bundle, wherever that is in the user's device. Then load that into a data instance and then decode that using JSON decoder. Now, previously, we put this into a method in content view to find and load stuff. But here, I wanna show you a better way, a smarter way. We're going to write an extension on bundle that'll do all that in one centralized place. So, make a new to file again, call this thing bundle-decodable, and press create. Now, this will mostly use code you've seen before, but here there's one small difference. Uh, previously, we used uh, string contents of to load files into a string. This time, we want to use data contents of, so we can use JSON decoder, which expects to have data rather than a string. Otherwise, it's the same. It still throws errors and such. So we'll say inside here, there's an extension on the bundle class adding a new method called decode. This will expect to be given some kind of file name string and it'll return the type we expect, which is a dictionary with string as key and astronaut as value. And inside here, the same kind of code we've seen before. We'll say guard let URL is self.url for resource, that file name. 
So find the URL for their file name with the extension nil in our installed app bundle. If that fails, we will immediately call fatal error saying we failed to locate that file, oops, file in bundle. So attempt to find wherever it is in a long path name to the location of this file on their iPhone. If we can't, bang, refuse to continue. Once we have that, we'll load in some data by saying guard at data equals try question mark data content of that URL. Again, if that fails, fatal error, fail to load file from bundle. If we're still here, we've found the file, we've loaded its data into a data instance, we can now decode it. So I'll say let decoder equal to JSON decoder and then attempt to decode this thing into a string astronaut dictionary. So guard let loaded equals try question mark decoder dot decode. This case is a string astronaut dictionary dot self from that data. And if that fails, so we've found the file, we've loaded the file, but it's not actually a string astronaut, then we will call fatal error. And we'll say fail to decode file from bundle. But if we're still here, we've made it to the end of finding, loading, and then decoding the file, we can send back loaded. That is our string astronaut dictionary. Now, as you can see, this method here makes liberal use of fatal error. If the file can't be found, if it can be load, can't be loaded or it can't be decoded, the app will crash, bang, it'll just go pop immediately. As before though, this will never actually happen in production unless you've made a catastrophic mistake. For example, you forgot to include the JSON in the app bundle or you put the wrong kind of JSON in the app bundle, whatever. Those problems are fundamental logic errors in our code. Don't do that. Don't try and recover from you putting wrong JSON into your app bundle. That's not a thing you want to try and do. JSON you fetch from the internet, fine. Recover from that going wrong because the internet can change immediately. You know, a server bug happens or the wet net goes down or who knows what. But in your app bundle, you've built it, you've shipped it to the app store, it must be correct. So fatal error is the right thing to do here. Now, you might wonder why we've used an extension on bundle here rather than a simple method in content view. But the reason's about to become clear as we load this JSON into our content view over here. We can do that with a single property in content view. We can say, let astronauts be bundle.main.decode astronauts.json. And yes, that is now all it takes. Now sure, all I've done is basically move functionality from content view into an extension, but there's nothing wrong with that. Anything that we can do to help make our views small and focused is a good thing. Now, if you want to double check that your code is correct, you could modify this text here rather than hello world. You could just say uh, show astronaut.count, for example. And when that runs back in our preview, it should say 32, meaning it has successfully loaded 32 astronauts into our dictionary. While that's thinking, oh, there you go, your answer 32. I'm going to rearrange our file slightly so astronauts tracing comes below my code. I prefer really to have uh, my Swift stuff grouped together and then extensions and then JSON. Uh, just keep my brain focused. Anyway, you can see correctly here, it is saying it found 32 astronauts in our dictionary, which is exactly correct. Our bundle extension works great.